Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Blue Axe base plate kit with removable arms. Before we get into that though, why don't we just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. So before we jump right in, why don't we just kind of touch base and refresh ourselves on the five main parts that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. First one will be the base plate. That's gonna provide us with a solid and reliable attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. Tow bar is gonna be the second part. And this is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of our Jeep to the back of our motorhome. Third main component will be safety cables. And these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. Fourth main component will be your tow bar wiring. And what this is gonna do is transfer your lighting functions from the back of your RV to the back of your uh, Jeep, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. What that's gonna do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your coach, uh, bringing you to a more predictable and safe stop. This is what the base plate is gonna look like whenever you're not towing behind your motorhome, and I do feel like that's important. Uh, because chances are pretty good you're not going to be flat towing all the time especially uh, with a vehicle like this you know these are really good looking SUVs and so appearance would be important to me uh, and with this setup honestly I don't really think it could get a whole lot better um, you know very small openings that you need to create to let the base plate come through it sits about flush with the grill uh, with the exception of the safety chain tabs and come out a little bit, but that's almost a necessity So you can actually use it and hook them up. So I think it does a really good job of kind of blending in especially uh, Since it's a matte black color You know, it doesn't really Grab, you know, uh, or draw attention to it by any means uh, So I think they get it did a good job as far as that goes and I also like that they give you a bracket that's already attached to your base plate that way you can hook up your wiring connector with ease and don't have to try to fabricate anything but the appearance isn't everything you know when it comes to setting up a flat toe uh, i feel like more importantly how easy it's going to be to use uh, something that you really got to care about because you don't want to be messing around with a bunch of stuff when you're trying to set up uh, behind your motorhome and this one uses removable arms and so it makes it easy and quick to uh, to get things going you can pull out these plugs that they give you to keep these clean and take the removable arms, slide them in and rotate it about a quarter turn until it locks into place. Same deal with this one here. And once these are in, that gives you an attachment point, that way you can hook up your tow bar. Once those arms are in there, you can get your tow bar set up and all your other components. So these are gonna work with the Blue Ox tow bars that have these type of ends and they can work with other tow bars as well other manufacturers uh, a lot of times you can get an adapter and to change out and allow you to pair up to the blue ox base plate but pretty straightforward everything just kind of goes right into place and pins down so it's real quick and easy uh, not a whole lot to it and then you'd hook up your other components and even with the large hooks here on our on our safety cables still don't really have any issues getting that to clip onto your base plate when it comes down to it though if you're looking to flat tow your grand cherokee l it's a pretty good option uh you know you really can't ask too much more from it looks good and is easy to use so you know a good fit overall uh in terms of the installation this one was definitely a little time consuming not confusing or anything uh, by any means but you know there's some drilling involved and you got to take the front fascia apart and and everything else so uh, be prepared to spend a little bit of time doing it but with that said why don't we go ahead pull into the garage and put it on together now to begin our installation we're gonna be here at the front of our Jeep and we need to remove our plastic radiator cover so you'll pop open the hood and then we're gonna have five plastic fasteners on each side of our vehicle so here's what the fasteners look like to get them out, just take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver. We'll pry underneath the head of it, and you're able to work the base out. Do that for the remaining ones on this side. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the 
exact same way. So with all those fasteners removed, now you're able to lift this up and away from the Jeep and we'll set it to the side. With that plastic piece out of the way, we can get to these fasteners. So on each side you'll have three T40 uh, Torx bit screws. Get them pulled out. And we'll switch out our T40 for a 10 millimeter size socket. And we're gonna remove this bolt here. We can move to our front wheel wells and along the edge. We're gonna have a total of five fasteners. Kind of just run along like that. And we're gonna get all those removed using an eight millimeter socket. Does help if you turn your wheel in one way or the other. This gives you some more space. What you can do if you peel your wheel wall liner back, so you just kind of untuck it, push it out of the way. Right here, where the quarter panel meets the front fascia, there's gonna be a bolt there. It's a 10 millimeter. And we need to get that removed. Underneath the front of our vehicle, uh, along the edge here, where the fascia meets your underbody panel, there's gonna be five eight millimeter head screws. And we'll work our way down and get all those removed. We're gonna have a 10 millimeter fastener right here. We'll switch out for an eight millimeter socket. And just in front of our front tire and kind of behind this plastic air dam, there's gonna be an eight millimeter head screw as well. Here's that fastener kind of tucked up there uh, in the corner. So if you take that underbody panel and just kind of push it out of the way, that'll expose some fasteners. You're gonna have one on each side like this, just a push pin, just like the others. You can pry that out. And um, you should have four 10 millimeter head bolts that run along this edge too. In our case, it looks like someone's been in here before possibly and those are missing. Um, not really a huge deal, but if uh, you have uh, uh, them there on your vehicle, you're gonna go ahead and need to pull them out as well. So I went ahead and put some painter's tape along all these seams, the areas that we're gonna be working so we don't scratch up the paint. And in our case, you have this trim piece that goes around our wheel well. We're gonna have to separate that up to about here. That way we can get the fascia off. So. There's um, some clips that is connecting it to our fascia that you can get to from the backside, which once I pop these out, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm doing here. So like these, these white clips here can actually reach in from the back. And if you squeeze them together, you're able to kind of separate this and, and, and pull it out. So. Just gonna work my way up uh, until about here. I might go one more. Once you get it up to about like this, you can. I like to just take a paper towel or something and kind of jam it in there. That way, it'll help keep this separated from our fascia. Over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have two electrical connections we need to disconnect. This one, as well as this one. For this one, there's a retaining tab. I guess you call it. You can just kind of pop that and open it up. And then you should be able to push down on it until you separate them. This one's really tight. So I did just pop that white thing out completely and then just came in from the back like that. To separate it. And then for this one up here, another red retaining tab to pull that out. 
push down on the center of it and separate it. We're on the passenger side, the same two electrical connectors, disconnect those, and then we're gonna have a washer fluid hose too. So I took a pair of ice grips, kind of pinched it, so hopefully it don't leak everywhere. You'll just squeeze the sides there and pull the two apart. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our fascia off. What I did, sprayed all the seams down with soapy water. It just helps kind of free everything up. And this is really tight, so, you know, expect to uh, kind of fight it a little bit. But on the seam here, we're gonna start at the corner. And just start to, uh, start to separate it. Like I said, it's really tight, so just continue to work it free, be patient, and eventually we will get it to, uh, to pop off here. So carefully pull it away, make sure you didn't miss any electrical connectors. Which looks like we're good. And we'll go ahead and set this off to the side. What we're able to do now, uh, we have this little plastic shroud piece that goes over our bumper beam. And since we need to remove the bumper beam, we need to free this up. So there's a push pin fastener here, just like the others. Pry underneath it. There's one just like it right there as well. So pop that out. I'm just going to swing this up and out of the way for now. May remove it entirely, may not. We'll kind of see what the deal is here in a minute. But then our bumper beam, you're going to have a 10 millimeter there. Get that nut removed. And we'll switch over to a 16 millimeter. Remove this bolt. as well as this one down here. I already removed the hardware on the other side, so this should be able just to kind of slide off and we'll get it out of the way. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that plastic piece because the bumper beam won't be reinstalled. Probably not gonna bother with these either, but it's one more fastener here that we can pry out and get rid of these shrouds. What we can do now, this portion of our frame, uh, we need to remove that material, that way our base plate will clear. So I'm gonna use a, a Dremel tool here and then probably come in with a, uh, a hacksaw, sawzall, uh, to get it all removed. We need to do now this piece of the shroud. We can trim that out so our base plate will clear. So there's a diagram of the instructions that you can follow. I drew that out. And this is just like hard, uh, um, a hard plastic. So I'm using a pair of snips to trim it there. And then I kind of bend it back and forth and naturally just want to break apart you might have to take a, a razor edge or something and just score it and get that material removed now what we can do if you measure about three inches down from this bolt hole in the middle of this black piece. Uh, we need to take a hole saw and create a hole uh, and what that's going to do is give us a, an access point to get our hardware in there. So it's going to drill this out. Like that. It feels like it was, uh, it was cutting like it was aluminum. Uh, so fairly easy to, to drill through. What we can do now, we grab our base plate and slide this up into position. 
And then it's sitting on there pretty good, but just to keep it in place, I'm gonna take the um, little nut there and just put it on hand tight on each side. What we can do now, the two holes here, we can take our existing hardware, put on some red Loctite, and all the hardware that we use to secure the base plate will receive some of that red Loctite. You'll have to pick it up separately though. But we're gonna get all of them started hand tight. That way we know everything's lined up properly. So everything is pretty close to begin with, so pretty good shape here. That one going, take the nut off, put a real small drop on those threads and put this back on. So once you have all these bolts in place, we need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in the instructions. At this point, if you look at the side of your base plate, we're gonna have four holes in it and we're gonna use those as a template to drill some holes into the side of our frame rail. That way we can get our bolts to pass through there. So a half inch drill bit and I'll just carefully drill uh, all of them out. Now what we can do once all these holes are drilled out, uh, starting with this one, you can take a bolt and a split lock washer and we're going to put this handle nut in through this opening line it up with this and that way it'll thread in um, i want to mention before you put the loctite on the bolts just take these and run them in by hand that way we make sure these are cleaned out and you don't have any junk in there because sometimes these are kind of a pain to get going so anything to make it easier on us is what we're going to do but take this we'll get it lined up And once we get it started, uh, we're just gonna make sure it's uh, going just a couple of threads. We're gonna leave it hand tight. With this one hand tight, now we can take the spacer block, and if you look on the bottom side, it's gonna be slotted. All right, and so we're gonna drop this behind the base plate, and we want this slotted portion to go around our bolt. So, I'll work this in. Whenever it's in there, you can kind of feel it. It's pretty easy, actually. You'll feel it drop around that bolt. You're gonna take another bolt, split lock washer and your Loctite, put that through the base plate, through the bracket, and through the hole in the frame, then come back again on the other side with your handle nut, and get it started. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll come back with a three-quarter inch socket and just snug these up a little bit. We don't need to get crazy, you know, tightening them down. Just run them down a little ways. And then we can uh, use the same type of hardware and the same technique to get these ones started, with the exception of we're not going to be putting a spacer block behind here, just the, the bolts are there and those handle nuts. So I got these other two started and just snug them down a little bit. And once that's done, we'll come back with our torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount listed in the instructions. Once those are torqued, you can trim off the remaining portion of the handle nut. So just a good pair of snips will make quick work of that. And then what you can do is take the included safety cables and get them going. So pretty straightforward. There's a hole in the base plate. Put the included link around it, wrapper cable around the frame. And then I like to zip tie it up here and there just to keep it you know, nice and tight and prevent it from rattling or clunking around. Uh, whenever you're driving down the road. So at this point, it'd be a great time to install any of your other flat towing components like a braking system, wiring, and things of that nature. And I say because you have all this extra space to work with the fascia removed. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And once that's done, we can come back, take our fascia, hold it up here, and figure out where we need to trim to get that all put back in place. Now, with everything else reinstalled, we can take our fascia and we're just gonna hold this up in position of roughly where it needs to go. That way we can kind of check everything out and see where uh, we need to potentially trim it to get everything to clear. 
So I got uh, our areas marked out where we need to trim. And my thought is when you're doing this, I just trim uh, less is more essentially. You know, if you if you cut this out and then you go to fit it up there, if it's still interfering, you can always clip out a little bit more. You don't want to make a big, huge hole and then uh, kind of have to live with it, you know. So I marked out some spots that I think are going to work. And with these, I'm just going to use a, a real sharp pair of snips to kind of cut around those areas. And get all that material removed. So I went ahead, kind of held this back up. We look like uh, we're in pretty good shape. I did cut a portion out here in the middle. Um, that way our prongs for our wiring connector can poke through and then we can hook that back up. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape. And I'll grab an extra set of hands again, pop this on and get it resecured. So like I said, uh, with everything trimmed out again now, We'll have another go at this and hopefully it'll all fit. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L.